Hello and welcome to this creative education and empowerment session. Um, I'm in London. Uh, we also have two of our Canon ambassadors, Laura and Tasneem, who are dialing in from Cairo and Jeddah. So uh, it's very global. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to Canon. Um, and then Laura and Tasneem uh, are going to have a conversation about uh, the importance of creative education and what it means to empower young people. I'll give you a little bit of background on Canon. We operate according to the philosophy of Kaiosei. This is a Japanese word that means living and working together for the common good. It's a really important philosophy and it underpins everything that we do as an organization. As a business, it underpins our vision for sustainability in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. The way we use it is we use it to nurture and grow the positive power of our imaging technology and services across that region. And the bit that I look after is part of this sustainability vision is the Canon Young People Programme. We believe that as a global imaging business, we have a responsibility to empower a new generation. We want to help them to develop their skills, firing their passion for imaging and inspiring them through the power of positive visual storytelling, educating, empowering and inspiring. Those are the three key elements of the Young People Programme. Most importantly for me, I want these young people to create new, uh, new opportunities for themselves and for others in their communities. I want them to talk about the issues that affect them raising their awareness around both the problems and the solution that affect their lives. As a framework, we use the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. These provide us with both the perfect starting point, but they also give hope and action a deadline of 2030. But it isn't just me, it is all the people I work with. And as part of Canon and the Young People Programme, I'm very lucky to be able to work with some of the world's best visual storytellers. In this particular instance, we have Laura El Tantawi and Tasneem Al Satam, but I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, Adam. <laughs> I actually remember meeting Laura Tantawi in Dubai at a photo uh, workshop, um, I think in 2014, in January. And I remember being very, very inspired by her stories and by her work. And it made me realize the power of storytelling and photography. And I, at this point, I was just photographing weddings um, for a few years. And I realized, I think, only then that I wanted to be a storyteller that would tell stories of Saudi women um, and things that were very important to me, which are gender issues, in a way that would trigger people's emotions and provoke their thoughts and makes them feel more um, in relation to the people that were being documented and photographed. Myself, initially, like I said, I was a wedding photographer, but it was only because I got married at the age of 17. Um, and I felt that because I had a very unhappy 10 year marriage that I was escaping my own unhappiness with other people's kind of happily ever after. And documenting weddings inspired me to tell more than beyond the weddings, what happens when Saudi women are divorced or widows or had never been in love. And projects like this have always been very empowering um, in many ways. It makes, at least for the women that I've shared this project with, it makes us realize that we're not alone. It makes us feel that our stories are heard. And no matter how many exhibitions I've had my work in, it doesn't make a difference as much as a Saudi woman coming up to me and saying, thank you. I wish I'd known of this project that there were more women being photographed and presented in a way that brings dignity and empowerment. Um, I photographed in many refugee camps, I photographed young girls, and a lot of times I've realized that at least in the MENA region, the Middle East and North Africa, um, that in our countries, we don't always have the means to tell our stories, um, not necessarily by society, um, if not also by our educational programs, but by giving workshops and, and feeling that the camera can be a toy, but this toy will give you much more than just playfulness and imagination. It can also be a way to tell your story instead of having someone else 
say it for you. Um, with the Canon program as an ambassador, I also got to mentor a few photographers. And one of the amazing photographers that have been inspirational mentees, but she was inspirational to me, um, is Sumaya Abdurrahman. She's an amazing, wonderful Egyptian photographer who told her story about FGM. Um, and the experience that she has shared through imagery has been very much inspirational, but also, um, I guess, enlightening that sometimes one image can make you take action and open discussions. And I, I look forward to Sumaya and other photographers work to say that we can all do the same. On to you, Laura. <laughs> Thank you, Tasneem. Thank you, Adam, for the intro. And Tasneem, it's really great to share the virtual stage with you today. And I'm really happy and looking forward to the discussion we're going to have. Um, you're right on. We met a few years ago in Dubai, and I remember exactly where we met. And it was so inspiring because, you know, when I started doing photography, I remember people were trying to box me into um, putting me, putting labels on me, like you're an Arab woman, you're Muslim, you come from the Middle East, you can kind of give us access to that region and tell us stories about women, what's happening there, which I think is great and empowering. But a lot of times um, I felt like that was boxing me in to a certain genre that maybe I wasn't particularly, um, I didn't feel particularly that I wanted to focus on. I think for me, my engagement of, with photography, I've always been inspired by um, how an image can relay emotions, um, relay emotions that I felt when I was experiencing the image, when I saw it, but also I love the power of a photograph and how it sits with people and what people take away from it. And I think what's really empowering about images is for me as a photographer, a lot of times, people tell me things about images that they felt in a photograph that I took that I didn't even anticipate or didn't think that I was capturing in an image. And I think this is very powerful about communicating photography. It's beyond an art form and beyond a way of expressing and telling a story. Um, and I think for me, what I really want to tell as a photographer, I'm really interested in social and environmental issues. I'm interested in understanding my own history and my own story. Um, you know, I think very much we come from a region that has also been cliched as a region of conflict, a region of violence. There's so many labels. And, you know, I'm a product of East and West. I lived in, in Egypt and I lived in Saudi Arabia for about five or six years. I went to high school there, as you know, Tasneem. And um, I lived in the U.S. for 10 years and now I've been in the U.K. for 13 years. So I sort of have one foot in the East and one foot in the West. And, you know, I'm trying to understand my own sense of identity through pictures by shining a light on my own culture, the streets in Cairo, things that, you know, perplex me and that I'm trying to find answers for. And it's really been an empowering way for me to, to make sense of my own identity and my own Egyptianness and what all of these things mean for me. And I think, you know, environmental issues are obviously, you know, I think this is the future for us and particularly for the young generation. I look at my nephews and nieces, I have six of them. I have two sisters, each has three kids. And I kind of look at them in the world that um, they're kind of growing into, you know, they're attached to their mobile phones and they're Googling or playing games all the time. And, you know, I think it's, it's a world now where I feel like I wanna shine a light on, on these issues that are their potential future. They're gonna be dealing with how the environment is changing, um, this relationship that we have with the land. You know, I'm a product of city life, whether in Cairo or London, I've always lived in big cities and there's often a discrepancy with, you know, the land and what the land actually looks like. What does it actually feel like? Um, so I've been photographing issues related to the land, you know, over the past 10 years, uh, since 2008, actually, looking at uh, farming and how the relationship that farmers have to the land and the challenges they're facing with these, you know, the drastic weather changes that we're seeing. And what's perplexing is that we're still in the world where some people are climate deniers. And this really interests me. Um, and it interests me how young people make sense of that message as well. Um, yeah, so um, Tasneem, I think what, what I'm interested in also is um, we haven't really rehearsed this conversation. And, you know, as many times as we've met and crossed paths, we've never actually had a sit down 
to talk about what photography means to each one of us, to you and to me. And I just wonder, do you feel that as a Saudi woman, you've been boxed in in the same way that I felt boxed in, you know, when I was emerging or how do you feel about that? Um, I think my feelings are beyond me being frustrated and angry. I. I studied social anthropology um, for my master's and social linguistics for my undergrad. And I was born like you out of Saudi. I was born in the US, I grew up in England. So I was always this mediator. I wanted to represent Westerners when I was in the Middle East and I wanted to present being an Arab and you know a strong empowered woman when I'm also abroad and say, but it's because I'm Saudi and not because I was raised abroad. So having that conflict within me kind of, um, I guess it wasn't as um, bad when I just, when I turned 30, um, I'm not 35 and I feel like I don't care anymore. I have two teenage daughters, um, age 14 next month and uh, 15. And I, I always tell them, you can be whoever you want to be as long as you are someone who's decent and a good representative of you, not necessarily the whole society and your whole country and nation. I think that's how we were raised a bit. Um, but I think coming from Egypt or from Saudi, where it's a country that everyone knows about, they're very prominent countries, whether it's with population or because of the culture and the way that we've been represented by media. But that's, I think, the gift of photography that when you are a photographer and you're an ambassador um, for Canon, but also a, an ambassador for a nation, you're showing beautiful imagery that's talking about conflict. Your books are amazing. And, and for me, they're very emotionally evoking without necessarily a long caption, which is something I always add. I have to add a long, long caption. Um, my friends always mock and say, you know, isn't it an image supposed to be worth a thousand words? Why do you have to write the thousand words? And I think you've succeeded with that. Some, I, I look at your images and sometimes I just feel the amount of joy or sadness and, you know, the anger that you might be carrying while you photograph that. It's, teach me. I always ask you for workshops. Teach me how to do that. <laughs> Well, thank you. I think I think what's really important, I was actually just explaining this to my parents the other day. You know, my dad's a doctor. He's an anesthesiologist, now retired. My mom is an artist. So my parents always offer these two perspectives. One is artistic. The other one is kind of more practical and kind of like what most people think. And I was telling them a conversation yesterday about photography and um, what I try to teach people when it comes to photography, that we all bring our unique perspective to the images that we create and that you, you arrive at an image with a story, a history, a culture, religion or no religion. And all of this is carried in every single image that you create. My dad was really perplexed by this concept. He was like, do you mean if I take a picture of this plate right now, it's gonna look different than if you take it than if your mom took it? I was like, absolutely. So it was a really wonderful conversation. And when I look at your imagery test name, I found, you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia for six years and I lived like, you know, the life of any Egyptian that comes there. It was, you you know, we went out to the shopping malls and we did all of that. And when I look at your imagery, you really do offer an insider's look at a world that I think has been so stereotyped over and over and over, particularly women. And I feel like you really show us the other side of Saudi Arabia that we don't know about. You really do educate us. Um, I feel like that comes with a huge responsibility, but it must also be very empowering because you're telling your own story. Yes, but I, I try to be a photographer behind the scenes. So I really, really try to separate myself. I'm just the photographer and these stories are about them, the women. And you know, what's amazing is that I photographed it, like over 55 stories of amazing women and over 200 weddings in Saudi. And at this point, I cannot say that there is a stereotype. There are couples who have met through Twitter and there are couples that have met in person and there are couples who have met through arranged marriages and there are women like there is a, and, and I went to Hyatt, which is in the North of Saudi Arabia and this um, small town, I noticed that there's a lot of um, women who have divorced themselves. And I remember one of them is called Um Muhammad and the mother of Muhammad. And she's in her sixties and she sells tea at the market. And she was telling me that she divorced herself um, by bringing another wife for her husband because she wanted to pursue her education. She wanted all, she knew also that her husband would not allow her daughters to uh, pursue an education. So she found another suitable wife 
and basically paid the dowry for her husband to marry the second wife and then said, you know, now you can divorce me. And to me, this is a story that I've never heard before. Um, other women who, one of them also was um, married when she was 15 in a very unhappy marriage. Um, he was very, very violent. She divorced with three children and um, was a, a janitor at a school, at a high school in Saudi. Um, long story short, she's now remarried with another three additional children. So six children, and she's now working as a nurse in a hospital. She, she educated herself. And I think, you know, in any society where there's equality for gender, then it's always going to be a much healthier environment. Thank you both very much. Uh, every time I hear you talk, I learn so much more and it just makes me realize how very lucky I am to work with you both. So. Thank you. Thank you for being thank part you, of this. And thank you for the UN, to the UN SDGs. Thank you for giving us that framework. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. And thank you, everybody that's been involved with this effort. And thank you, Tasni.